fresh water. Tripod. Hey. There you go, dude. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are out here today with our goats, our Nigerian dwarf goats. And I'm gonna answer a question that uh, a lot of people made some comments about. The goats are trying to eat my pants. And yeah, don't, you cannot eat the microphone. Stop, stop it. So I'm gonna answer some questions today about uh, a very common question I get asked and a, and a very common comment on uh, the video where I made this little pen here in the woods. We, uh, this is a new house we just moved into. We made a, kind of a new temporary pen for, uh, for the goats here. Uh, and a lot of people said, they're gonna kill every single one of your trees and you know all those kinds of things. So is that really true? Is that a concern that, uh, that we have? So let's talk about what do you do with goat pastures and trees and how will they affect your woodland? So, no, no. If my microphone cord makes it out of here alive, it'll be a miracle. Leave me alone. So we have a, a small pasture here. We have three goats out here. So we have a Nigerian dwarf doe. We have our Nigerian dwarf buck, who uh, when we got him, he did not have, uh, his, his horns were not properly uh, debutted or disbudded. And uh, so they grew back all kinds of uh, messed up here. And so he, he's kind of a unique situation. And then we have Goaty, which is our, uh, our new little weather. Uh, he is the, the offspring of, of these two from last year. And so we have a little pasture out here for them, or a little pen out here in the woods. And uh, they have this little, little calf hut that uh, has been working really good for them to uh, stay out of the weather. And we have a lot of trees in here. A lot of people made the comment, what's gonna happen to all those trees? The goats will certainly uh, eat them all. And so let's take a look at what they have done. So here's a, a smaller silver maple, and you can see the uh, mostly rub marks, but uh, some nibbling here also. And so, good, you give us an example. So Adam's horns bother him a lot because of the way that they have grown in, and I think that they irritate him sometimes. And so he he tr he rubs those horns a lot on trees and other things. He, uh, you can tell he'll uh, he'll he'll constantly kind of do that. He, I don't know if it's like an itch or if it's just a, a, a habit or what it is for him. But And then you can see some other smaller trees out here, some nibbling and, and some rub marks. Uh, and then we've got a bigger tree here. This is a dead tree though, so it looks like a, a dead uh, oak tree. Uh, and so they've been rubbing on that. But all of the bigger trees, they don't really bother. Um, and even if they, they do, they will uh, um, you know rub maybe rub marks on it or, or have some you know, some bark rubbed off in patches, but they don't don't really bother it too much. Even this this uh, oak tree here, I think this one might be dead too. They haven't bothered this one too much. But certainly all of the smaller trees, anything of, I would say, this diameter. So to give you an example, you know, of what the diameter is, my finger here. So anything that's uh, maybe three or four inches and below, they're probably gonna kill. They've only been out here for a couple months now and you can already see quite a bit of, uh, of, of marks here. Smaller trees like this, certain kinds of trees they like better too, and they'll, uh, they'll eat all the bark off of. These ones here, this one here, uh, they, they, they eat quite a bit of that. And then of course the Christmas tree, which we threw in here, they'll nibble, nibble all the bark off this thing too. You can see they started nibbling at it down here, and they, they've eaten almost all the needles off of it. Um, in fact, I'll rotate this around so they can get to rotate around so they can get to some fresh some fresh pine needles they <laughs> just eat them Adam you don't have to beat them up first so they like the, they, they like all that kind of stuff we've just been feeding them bales of hay um, on the ground in here for right now until I have a hay manger built uh, which they do just fine with they spread a lot of it out this is a lot of grassy hay and so you'll see kind of a lot of waste here and then of course we have the duck which has 
no real purpose other than to make a mess of all the water dishes. So with that being said, whenever you're putting your goats in a, in a woodland pasture, you want to, you know, obviously understand that they probably are going to eat anything. And I've said this before, goats will eat all of the brush, all of the seedlings, all of the smaller trees, everything like that will get cleared out. In fact, they're extremely useful at clearing pasture. Uh, this area here uh, in the future will be, uh, I don't know how far down the road, but this is a, a possible site of a pole barn or some type of a structure back here. And so I'm not worried if they clear this area out. I want, actually I'm okay with them clearing it out. I hope all the smaller trees get cleared out and then maybe some grass will grow in here uh, for them as well uh, down the road as we rotate pastures and things. But they certainly will. <laughs> As you can see, Adam tearing a tree apart behind me. They certainly will uh, kill off any brush. You can let let goats go. You know, if I had more of them, you could let them go on a, a you know couple acres of fenced-in woodland, and they will clear everything from you know whatever they can reach, maybe four feet, uh, five feet down to the ground. They will clear it all out, and you'll be able to see right through there. Happened at our old house on the farm, and it uh, certainly will happen here. And uh, we're okay with that. That's that's totally fine if, if some of these get cleared out. But the bigger trees, they don't seem to bother. And if they do, you know, scrape some bark off the bigger trees, uh, they can heal up. It won't really kill them. Uh, it doesn't seem to anyway. Uh, we had a lot of larger trees, you know, six six inches in diameter and, and up in our old pastures, and they don't seem to bother those. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, if you have things that are sweet, like the bark is sweet, like a fruit tree, any kind of fruit trees, cherry trees, anything like that, they probably will... Uh, they'll probably destroy those and, and eat the bark off those no matter how big they are. So you want to be careful. Anything that tastes good to them, they're, they're certainly going to going to eat. You know, when I, I've talked about uh, pasture rotation before and other things like that, but one of the big advantages of using animals to clear land, if you want to have a pasture down the road, which some of this area back here and behind the house, uh, we would like to have some, uh, you know, the forest cleared out just a little bit. We don't want to cut all the trees down, but uh, we want to raise the canopy up of the trees a little bit, let a little bit of filtered light through so that we can get some, you know, some sm smaller brush growth or smaller grass growth back here for some animals. You can use animals to clear and clean out a pasture without really doing too much. Uh, chickens will come in behind the goats we'll, in the springtime. Uh, we'll let them out in the same area and they will scratch through and turn up and they'll dig through all the leaves and all the broken town down debris in here and they'll clear this pasture of bugs and worms and they'll get all of their nutrients in here. Uh, the goats will continue to keep all of the brush and leaves and seedlings cleared up to about four or five feet. And then if we ever did want to uh, get back into pigs, they can actually till the soil right up and we could plant a garden here at some point. I mean, so over time, you know, you can use the animals this way, especially in a woodland type area, to, uh, to clear pasture and, and make more room for more animals or garden space or other things like that without really doing anything other than just caring for animals. And the other thing is that this is actually really good for the goats. Uh, the goats, uh, the bark and all the, the nutrients that they get out of the, uh, the seedlings and, and the brush and the small uh, leaf growth that will happen in the spring and all that kind of stuff, it's very good for them. That's the, the their natural diet and so we want to give them as much of that as possible uh, in the spring I plan to section off one or two more areas about the same size that they can go into and we can rotate them through we'll let some of the leaves grow back and even some of the seedlings recover in here and then we'll put them back in and they can tear that stuff all back up again and, and mow it down so goats are very useful for that but you want to be careful if you have trees that you want to keep if you you know you don't want your you know smaller trees to to be killed then <laughs> then you wanna not use goats. You let your chickens go in, in, in an area or something like that. You gonna headbutt me? You stink. We need a hay manger for you guys. They've made a little trail up to the calf hut here. This little little calf hut has uh, worked out pretty good for them, I think. They uh, have plenty of space to all get in there. In fact, when it's been snowing, You'll see three goats and a duck all sitting in here, <laughs> staying warm. So uh, I guess that's uh, that's been been good. So from outside the pen here, uh, all the fencing that I put in here, if you've watched that video, I'll put a link uh, to that video, but it's all uh, using trees as posts. Um, all the corner posts are done with trees here. And man, does that work well. It keeps everything nice and tight and uh, no leaning or anything like that. I don't have to have any, any special support corners. Uh, digging digging post holes in the with all these roots and trees in here is kind of a challenge. So 
But uh, this worked really well. And one of the comments I got on the uh, video was, oh, don't do that because it's gonna grow into the tree and then when you go to cut that tree down, it's gonna be a, a nightmare. Uh, I mean, I suppose that could be possible. Uh, the, the five or six trees that, uh, that are around here that, you know, that could happen to, I guess. Um, I guess in, in 30 years when I want to cut this tree down, maybe I'll just cut it there and leave the rest. I don't know. That wasn't a, wasn't a huge concern of mine uh, when I put the fencing up. The, the main concern was to make a home for the animals and, and uh, you know, these staples and all that stuff that will damage the trees. And it'll take quite a while for them to really grow into the tree, but uh, that's okay with me. <laughs> hey, Goaty. Goaty McGoatface, the, the goat named by all of you, has been very healthy and strong and doing well. Looks much like his father and uh, one of our favorite goats. He's very, very friendly. So, so just a quick video uh, update today on the goats and the goat pasture. You know, I, I want to answer the question for a lot of people. I know I had the question when we first got goats, you know, are they going to kill all the trees out here? What are they going to do? And I guess the answer to that is yes and no. They certainly will kill the smaller trees, but they you normally will leave the uh, larger trees alone. And so um, feel free to put them out in your woods if you want them to clear it up for you, <laughs> make some space, and uh, maybe down the road, rotate some other animals through, and you can use it as a garden space down the road. That uh, could be part of the plan here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the little goat update today. If you have uh, anything to add, how, what are your experience with goats and trees? Love to hear from you guys, of course. And uh, as always, don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video and uh, subscribe to the SSL Family Dad channel. If this is your first time here, we'd love to have you tag along. We do lots of homesteading and DIY things, fixing things and building things. Uh, I have a lot of good projects planned for the spring. I won't let you guys in on all of them yet. I will surprise you with some of them, but it should be a lot of fun. So I'll stick around for those, uh, those things. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.